it's not just a, um, an institutional issue, but also a fiscal issue. Um, can the government continue to um, keep their eye on the ball with regards to fiscal consolidation? Um, I think we'll all know the answer to that on October 23rd. Um, there is this environment where, um, I think there was a question in the audience earlier about the Trimus um, having difficulty um, di uh, uh, meeting dividend payments or, or sustaining dividend payments at the same level. Um, at the same time, commodity prices themselves are not recovering to the same extent that we had previously thought. Um, and uh, just sort of to add to that, the sort of outlook for growth, if you take uh, sort of some, some of the sentiment-driven factors that we've already discussed, um, you know, private investment seems to be turning down. Um, uh, when you look at consumer sentiment, that's also starting to fall um, in line with, I guess, the Malaysian's increased sensitivity to the level of the ringgit. So, um, you know, that is going to be posed, all these are going to pose a challenge to, um, to revenue. And in the political context, what we are looking for, I think someone mentioned goodies in the budget. So um, that is, I think, one consequence of increased political risk. There could be a risk that um, expenditures need to be hiked to consolidate um, uh, a support for the government. So um, that is what we're looking at. We, our, our positive outlook was predicated on, on the prospects for improved fis fiscal reform and, and, uh, and uh, performance. Um, and I guess in this environment, we are seeing you know clouds to that outlook. Another question that we keep that I keep getting from investors the the, the last few weeks was was uh, on the issue of capital control. Will Will Malaysia go back to Asia financial crisis days and do that again? And our response was that's not our base case. I think they should have sailed for that to actually happen. And last week, when Prime Minister Najib announced his uh, stimulus program. I think what was not said was actually equally more important, was equally as important as what was said. And, you know, on the, on the economic council that, that he formed to come up with plans, uh, one of the important figures there was the architect of the capital control regime back in the age. And investors were, of course, worried that, that, that some form of capital control would be imposed. Uh, but that was not the case, despite the fact that, you know, the architects were still there. And uh, I think that was a big relief to investor and Prime Minister Najib reiterated that, that, that was, that's, that's not going to happen. We discussed this with, with the central bank. Um, completely understand their, their policy approach, which is um, the reserves are there to be used in situations when, uh, when they believe that that's the right thing to do. And the exchange rate is there and it's flexible and that will also take some of the adjustment. So completely open about um, you know, the, the approach and the response to, to capital outflows, they're there to facilitate those outflows and allow those who wish to take their money out of the country to take it to take it out of the country. And it will either have an effect on the exchange rate or the reserves. So, you know, it's not something where we have any criticism at all of the of the policy response, but we do need to potentially think down the road about uh, how low uh, we think the reserves would, would be going. I'm not suggesting that we're concerned about that now um, at all. Um, and you know, we, we we assume that the policy mix and the approach of the of the central bank may you know may adjust over time as the reserve level adjusts over time as well. So I'll leave it. I'll leave it there.